Hello and welcome to the first in our series of videos about the Charity Commission, which is the regulator of charities in England and Wales. I'm Rachel McCastman, I'm a solicitor at Russell Cook in our charity and social business team, and I'm also a charity trustee. I'm here today with my colleague James Sinclair Taylor, who's a partner in my team and also has decades of experience advising charities on governance issues, as well as being a trustee and a chair of many charities. So today I will be quizzing James on the Charity Commission's main regulatory concerns. So James, I thought I'd start by asking you to give us a bit of background about the Charity Commission's regulatory role. Okay. Well, the Commission uh, is uh, an inheritor of a very old process. Charities have been around since the Middle Ages, essentially. And um, quite early on, things started to go wrong with charities. People would leave money for the poor or a piece of land where the corn was going to be uh, collected and given to the poor. And funnily enough, it would find its way into the hands of the trustees, the local nobility or whatever. So the Crown started sending out people with a commission piece of paper saying, you're empowered to investigate this. So on a horse with their commission in a bag, they would ride around the place. Um, the Victorians, uh, in their reforming mood um, in the 1850s, regulated that and actually um, started having a permanent charity commission and we now work with um, a heavily regulated body um, which is uh, governed by the Charities Act uh, and has got a series of obligations in that act so you know what it's there to do and these are to um, increase awareness in the public benefit um, uh, idea, um, to increase the effectiveness of charities to enhance their accountability and to ensure that they comply with legislation. And compliance has got a bit broader because it's not just legislation. We're talking increasingly about advice and alerts that come out of the Commission. And how do we know what the key regulatory concerns of the Charity Commission are? Well, technically, those five objects I've just talked about should all be equal concerns of the Commission. Um, but you, if you want a sort of a slightly more sophisticated thinking about what the Commission's concerned about, you need to think about what the tr key drivers for them are. So there's a uh, need to be seen as an effective public body. Um, there's a um, belief in their view that they should be uh, representing the public view of, of what's going on in charities. And finally, there's a really acute sensitivity to issues that arise in the media or in Parliament um, or in, um, in any other forum. Um, so those, I think, are, you know, if you bear those in mind when you're thinking about what will the Commission be driven to do, that those are the things that will drive it to. And is there any kind of single overarching theme that ties together all of the Commission's concerns? No, um, and it, it moves on. Um, so uh, we all were aware of concerns about sharing data and fundraising practices um, some years ago. Um, it moved on with the Oxfam scandal to uh, in, in intense concern with safeguarding. Um, it uh, then um, uh, has moved on more recently to uh, concern about charities becoming involved in controversy uh, following the National Trust issues. And um, there are a range of other areas like risk and more recently, perhaps uh, solvency that have been particular concerns. So there is no one concern, although the Commission tends to develop over time, adding concerns to the list. And w is it possible to say right now that there's one particular issue that's the most important? Technically, no, but uh, I think safeguarding is front and centre um, and the related requirements for serious incident reporting, which I know you're going to do a session on in much more detail later. And in terms of trustees and what they can take away from this video, how do we know what the Charity Commission really expects from trustees? Um, I think their overarching expectation is quite well expressed. They, they think uh, trustees should meet public expectations and um, what they say public expectations are are that charities should be held to a higher standard. That's a bit difficult for a lawyer because it's a question of higher than who. I mean, do we expect a higher standard of charities than an NHS hospital or a school or a government department? Um, it's not really very clear. 
And it's also difficult because um, there are different themes in the law. Um, many of you will be aware that Kids Company uh, went bust with um, rather spectacularly. Um, and uh, there was an action in the courts to make the trustees liable for its failure. Um, what the judge said in that, in acquitting all the um, uh, trustees, uh, was that um, the law looked with favour on trustees who'd made mistakes, who'd perhaps been negligent, because um, you know the key issue is, do we need to protect um, the public from these people? And her view uh, in her judgment was that you didn't need to protect the public from them, even though there had been a very large failure of a very big charity. Um, That's really interesting. And for trustees and senior managers of charities, and in terms of the risk of compliance visits, which I know we'll be talking about a bit later, is there any kind of key sensitivity that they should know about that could potentially trigger a compliance visit? Um, there are a whole range of things that are quite likely to make the commission visit. Um, sometimes it's the commission's own agenda, so they're following up on their regulatory alerts. So trustees need to be aware of what regulatory alerts have been issued that might be relevant. Uh, sometimes it's a media concern. Um, sometimes it's lessons they believe they've learned from an inquiry into a charity. So it does vary, I'm afraid. And finally, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you think it would be helpful to share? Um, I suppose uh, the sensitivity uh, for both the Commission and I think trustees should be reputation. Um, mm -hmm. Reputation is probably one of the biggest assets of most charities and it needs absolutely careful protection. It, in addition, needs protection because the Commission's own concern about reputation could lead to damage to your reputation because they might investigate you. And when they investigate, um, they put a report of the fact that they're going to investigate up on the web and you may get press interest. And even if, as a result, um, happened with National Trust, uh, they're acquitted of any wrongdoing in the end, the reputational damage will be significant despite the fact that the inquiry of the Commission didn't show any problems. So reputation, reputation, reputation. And that's quite an interesting example, isn't it, actually, of um, the kind of controversial issues you were talking about earlier and charities getting caught up in culture wars. Yes, absolutely. Um, the Commission is concerned uh, about uh, controversy, but at the same time, they recognise, as they should, that charities often do pursue things which aren't necessarily mainstream and may cause controversy. Um, what you need to do, as the National Trust did, uh, is be able to evidence that you thought carefully about it as trustees. You perhaps took advice. Um, you perhaps consulted key stakeholders. Um, uh, and, and that what you were doing is directly related to achieving your objects, particularly if it's highly controversial. Well, thank you, James. And I hope that was useful for everyone watching. If you have any questions for me and James, our contact details will be alongside this video and they're also available on our website. And um, this is, as I mentioned at the beginning, the first in a series of videos. So there will be some other videos um, talking about different topics relating to the Charity Commission. But for now, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.